And then the guy said, he's gone, he's gone. And I thought, well, gone where? I mean, the paramedics here, the lumps down there, where's anybody gone? And then over my left shoulder, this spiraling tunnel. And it was moving whether I was moving or not. And I could feel myself being pulled down it. In 1975, I was 25 years old. I thought I was the toughest, most narcissistic, um, egomaniacal bad boy. United States Marine Corps, working for various programs, you know, not religious, not any of that. I thought I was the center of the universe. And one evening I was sitting down as Mr. Somebody and I was holding the telephone to my ear, and that was when you had landlines back in the day. Mm -hmm. And lightning came down the phone line. It hit me in the side of the head. It went down my spine. It welded the nails of the heels of my bass legions to the nails in the floor. If it hadn't grounded by welding, the, by welding those nails, I would have exploded. It threw me in the air, slammed me back down, breaking the bread bed frame and I was burning and on fire and I could not see. Wow. And the pain, Alex, was so incredible. And when, when you experience not knowing what happened, I did, couldn't have ever imagined lightning. So I was trying to get to a position as a defensive position as a fighter and a combat guy, and I could not move. I could not move and I couldn't see where I was. And my God, the pain, every nerve ending was burned. I mean, I have pictures of what I looked like eight days after that. And you can see what it, the spine, my bruises down my spine, every vertebrae had a big bruise on it where it had just twisted me in the air. And then all of a sudden I lift up out of my body. I could see I wasn't in any pain. And it did not matter where I was. I was not down there anymore. And I'm looking around and seeing that everything is vibrant. You would think it was solid, but nothing is really solid. It's like the matrix. It's just not all those numbers. And everything has a certain resonance and a frequency. And I was looking at all of that. And somehow I knew I knew this place better than I had known that 25-year-old punk where I was now. And I watched them. The guy on the other end of the phone was a corpsman in the Navy. He came straight over. He lived really close. Uh, my girlfriend was just to take a CP, uh, CPR course. And so she was pounding on me. And then TM got there and they worked on me. Say, so call the paramedics. Went next door, call the paramedics. I'm just floating around. I'm looking at everything. I'm so disconnected from it. You know, and this is going to happen to everybody, Alex. You'll be so happy when your time comes that you won't know what to do with yourself. And the biggest thing that people do is grieve about losing you. Well, that only slows you down. It only holds you because you stay connected to them instead of them celebrating your life. So I watched them load me in the ambulance. And I figured I better go with me. OK, because it was a new and interesting reality. So I'd better go with me. So I cannot figure out how I was floating above my the paramedic working on me. And I and I, I had visual range. I don't know how that possibly worked, but I did. And then the guy said, he's gone. He's gone. And I thought, well, gone where? I mean, the paramedics here, the lumps down there. Where's anybody gone? And then over my left shoulder, this spiraling tunnel. And it was moving whether I was moving or not. And I could feel myself being pulled down it. And I moved down this tunnel and I come in this place of bright, brilliant, beautiful light. You know, everybody will have an inner knowing, Alex, that they've been there before and that they know this place. There is no fear. And a lot of times when people have fear at the end of life, someone that they trust and know comes to get them. What people don't understand is all of this led me to become a hospice volunteer. 
I've been a hospice volunteer for 42 years, and I have more than $34,000 at the bedside, and I've been with 2,010 people going from this world to the next, and I've been with 348 people taking their last breath, and I spent the last 37 years in the VA dying with veterans. So all of this was so impressive to me of what I saw and what I witnessed and what I went through that it transformed my life. You know, it just transformed it because we are great, powerful, and mighty spiritual beings with dignity, direction, and purpose. You were that before you got here, and you will be that when you leave here. You take on these social psychological identities to achieve certain goals. Both you're chosen to come here, and then you choose to come here. So I get down to the end of this tunnel in this bright, brilliant, beautiful light, and this is another one of the issues I have. I look down to see my hand or I was going to look at my body because I'm steady. I'm in this place. There's not all that just going on with that dead guy. And I look at my hand and my hand was not there. And then as I focused, my hand appeared and I could see my hand. It's not like Michael Jackson with the glove on, but it had a shimmering essence to it. And then I saw a being, This, and that's the only thing I could describe these things as, a being, a radiant being. I can understand why people think wings because of the movement around that body as it was moving toward me. And my hand disappeared back into that shimmering silverness as I focused before I left and focused on the being coming toward me. When this being game came to me, a sense of safety and calm rushed over me. And I always say it like this. You know when you cut your knee and you're and you're four years old and you run to your mother and it's got blood and she picks you up and sets you on the washing machine mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and she's to fix it, you know? What that feeling is the feeling, no matter how old you are, that's the feeling that you get, that loving, compassionate sense of safety. And then I had what I think is the single most important thing about the near-death experience other than it does happen, which confirms without any question that no one dies. It will not happen. And how do I know that? I have been dead three times. I've had one death experience, and I've had four near-death experiences. Dead, struck by lightning, dead for 28 minutes, completely paralyzed for six days, partially paralyzed for seven months, two years to learn to walk and feed myself, passing out, taking steps, breaking my nose, blood, pulling my shoulder out of socket, trying to push the button on the door to get to open the door. And I just black out and hang there for three hours until my dad comes by, pulls my shoulder out of joint, breaks my collarbone, and I'm still hanging there. Well, Back in the tunnel. So this being the most important thing that everybody has to understand is the panoramic life review. You and this is concurrent in most near death experiences. You will see your life pass before you in a 360 degree panorama. You have missed nothing. Then you'll watch it from a second person point of view as if you were your own best friend. So you can see how silly you are, how funny you are. And how unserious you are. Okay. Then you literally become every person that you've ever encountered. And you feel the direct results of your interaction between you and that person. Wow. And then there is a question. And I'm going to use the term God. Because there's no word. God is a German word. But there is no word for it. Then this divine essence asks you a question. If God couldn't come today and God sent you. In the life you just reviewed, what difference did you and God make? What does that tell you? You are responsible. You chose to come here. You were chosen and you chose. And you're going to be every person. So it is your intent that matters. Not what you do, but why you're doing it. And then that reflection, because I basically didn't have a lot of really good things after three that, you know, I mean, I had to be... the Oh, God, the most ignorant, heathenous brute. I mean, my. And the worst part about it, Alex, is I could fight. (laughs) I could back those words up. So I had to 
take a lot of punishment for my, my actions. But I am responsible. And nobody's going to get away with anything. And the universe is fair and just in the story. And once that was over, this being took me to what I call crystal cities. You know, I have no other term for how I would describe it because I remember driving into Denver one night about 2 a.m. and the houses were lit up on the sides of the mountains and they, because of the fog, they radiated out and that was the image that I put to that. And I got into this crystal city and I was looking at the architecture of it and then these beings, these 12 beings appeared. You know, and I go through all the religious context of the 12 disciples, the 12 gates, the 12 pearls, the 12 tribes, all that. So 12 has got to be a significant position. And if you're a Tesla, 3, 6, and 9 are the variable numbers of how the universe operates in frequencies and harmonics. Mm -hmm. So it all kind of makes sense to me now. But each of these beings showed me a box. And what would happen, Alex, is that being would radiate. And the, there was a 13th being to my right. And that 13th being would designate, not in order, but designate a being to show me what became now is known as the prophecies of Daniel. I always call that section Nostra Daniel <laughs> because I, well, I'm just some jackass from South Carolina, okay? <laughs> I, I, I know too much about me to be impressed. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, right. I don't. I don't deal with any of that. But what happened was I saw a series of events. Each one of them showed me series of events. In my near-death experiences, my one-death experiences, and my other near-death experiences, because of damage done to me from being struck by lightning, I've had to have open-heart surgery, brain surgery, and open-heart surgery. And then after this last open heart surgery, because I had an aneurysm under my aortic valve, I, I went into surgery. They only gave me a maximum of 10 days. At least that's what the doctor told my brother, my sister, and my wife. That I had about 10 days. And she said that the scar tissue and damage on the inside of me was unbelievable. And that no one would ever be able to go back in there no matter what. Because of what she saw, she couldn't figure out how I'd live this long. Well, she missed it. Five days later, on a Sunday morning at 2 a.m., I went into cardiac arrest. And they had to resuscitate me. About seven minutes, I was resuscitated, and I went into cardiac arrest again. Jesus. Okay, now that was two and a half years ago. And so when someone goes to telling me that they think that the about life after death and that you're living in a dead universe, if you take drugs or pharmaceuticals or anything that looks to a doctor, then you live in a dead universe. It's dead. Or there's a living universe. Well, I live in a living universe. I celebrate this. I know I don't die. And in the four shots they've had at me, I've never been to hell. So if you don't die and you don't go to hell, this ain't nothing but entertainment to me, you know. Yeah, I mean, I know about pain. I know about suffering. And I think they have to kill me, Alex, so like every 10 or 15 years. They have to kill me every 10 or 15 years. So there's nothing somebody's going to tell me about what they're going through that I cannot help understand how they get through it because I have been them. And then if you look at it from a spiritual point of view, struck by lightning, under Black's Law, which is the Black's the dictionary of, of Black's Law is the dictionary used for legal terms, an act of God is a defensible position in a court of law. So that's spiritual. Open heart surgery, the sinner, breaking me, hmm. brain surgery, mental, physical, and spiritual. Each of those places that you attack me to stop me or to make me pay attention. I don't ever take the place of a victim. Why? A spiritual being cannot conceive of themselves as being a victim. I've been able to partner with Mind Valley to present you guys free master classes between 60 and 90 minutes covering mind, body, soul, relationships, and conscious entrepreneurship. 
taught by spiritual masters, yogis, spiritual thought leaders, and best-selling authors. Just head over to nextlevelsoul.com forward slash free.